Welcome back to Sip the Tell of Films, and as you can see by the thumbnail, today's subject is Isaiah Likely. He's likely to be a, a impact rookie for the Baltimore Ravens. He's likely to be the number two or three tight end aside from Mark Andrews and Boyle. And he's likely to score a bunch of touchdowns because of how much coverage Andrews will see. And he's also likely to play some wide receiver. Roll the intro. Again, welcome back. And if this is your first time here and you enjoy what you see, please hit that like button. Uh, if you really want to be here and you really enjoy the content, subscribe also and hit the bell so you can be notified when I drop this random content. Uh, share it too. Share whatever group chat you're in. If you're a Ravens fan or just a football fan in general, you know, share these videos with your with your people. But on to Isaiah Likely. Uh, what I did was I took this game versus Arkansas State. He had over 200 yards. And I'm going to show you not only him just catching balls, but some other nuances of his game that I think um, will translate to, to what we're trying to do in Baltimore. And we'll, you know, we'll help him kind of fit into the system. So let's start right here. Um, and this first play is a long touchdown. But what really intrigued me about this play is his release. The defensive end didn't touch him at all. He, he did a good job of working his shoulders as to not be touched. And even if the defensive end wanted to, like, put hands on him and stop him from releasing, he would have pushed him in the back, which at that point, if you know anything about playing receiver, the defender pushing you in the back has no bearing on your route. You've pretty much won the route at that point. Dip that shoulder inside. Perfect release. I mean, it's a great play fake, too. But it's just the little things. The little things is what's going to, you know, help this guy be successful in the NFL. And you can see the the avoidance on the, the end zone shot better. This is likely here. It's just, it's just subtle. But just not allowing 21. And I thought it was a defensive man. I think that's a safety or whatever. But not allowing him to put his hands on him and stop his process, progress from getting up the field makes this play a lot easier for the quarterback. Just a little subtle dip. Now he widens so seven can't do anything and pretty much too late now. Another thing I like to show you is this guy right here. Number 10. He's a safety also. He's one of their safeties. Watch this. He's the guy that's going to be chasing Likely down the field. This is him right here. Let's see if at any he closes any gap on Likely. So that gives you an idea of likely speed. So when Likely catches the ball, he's five yards behind him. At the 50, he's still five yards behind him. At the 25, he probably closed a yard. At the 5, he's probably closed another half a yard. So for roughly 75, 80 yards, he made up a yard and a half on a tight end. Kid can run. And I don't remember his 40 time at the combine or pro day or whatever, but the kid can run. All right, let's bounce on, to, bounce on to our second play. See him highlighted right there. And this is a staple of, of any offense that you have a H back in. You're going to run some, some inside zone, and you're going to run some split zone. And the, the next progression off that split zone is some kind of little dump pass in the flats to the guy that will be blocking the end. And, you know, if you got an athletic guy, this is what can happen. Whereas, where, and keep in, frame, keep in mind, a lot of times the guy that's highlighted right here for us, Baltimore, is 42. But imagine putting this cat in that position instead of 42. This play translates completely to what some of the stuff Baltimore does. And you take you take Ricard out of this spot and put in likely, you get a lot better results if they get to him in the flats. Not saying Ricard can't catch this and get maybe to the 10 or the 5, but this kid can score from that position. 
He, he can outrun some um, angles. Got a little jukes. He's you know using he's using him in that H back position is is, is going to be vital. It's going to be vital. Cause you don't always want to just pound folks. You want to have a guy in that can that can be you know versatile. All right, this is him right here highlighted, and I kind of cut this one short so it's kind of messed up a little bit. But just watch the route running and and the selling of this route. Selling it like I'm blocking down. I'm gonna creep out. Now I'm gonna turn it up. Now again, this is I think this is number ten again. Won't close. About a three yard difference with an angle. He actually increases the gap on that one. Just imagine getting him in space rather than forty two. Or Boyle. Or Tomlinson. Or anybody not named Mark Andrews. All right, that's right here. A uh, little goal line, not goal line, but red zone situation. I think this is one way he has to block. No, we don't have to block on this. Watch this catch. Watch this catch. Good or good release where he's not, you know, held up at the line and goes up and get it. What I don't like about it is not high pointed, but, you know, I ain't going to be choosing. It's not high pointed, but I ain't going to be choosing. He went and got it over two people. You get a better view of the catch from this from this angle right here. Again, watch the subtleness of not being able to be held up or jammed up at the line of scrimmage by five or seven. Just that subtle dipping of the shoulder. He stepped. I mean, I helped him that he stepped out, but still he stepped in to avoid it. Now he one on one with that dude trying to see what he's doing. He's eyeing the quarterback. Just a little leverage on him. Little small, small push off, nothing you know extravagant about that. Really high point. It just, it's just, I'm thinking his hands, you know, since he didn't take like both hands to put him over his head, he's still high point the ball. He went up and got it. It's a good catch. One hand, but down. Still an NFL touchdown. But look how athletic that is out of a tight end. Out of a tight end now. Now. Look where he's lined up at now. Started down here at the tight end position. Now moved out here. What this does is, let's go back a little bit. Alright, so you come out of you come in out of the huddle and you know NFL has some guys up there like screaming personnel, personnel. So you see a tight end two backs. So you bring in your personnel to match up with a tight end two backs. So then you see this formation. So if you're a man, you probably take your corner and bring him over here on these two receivers. So now you're going to leave a safety, depending on how many you got in the game, or a linebacker on this dude. So say you got some kind of two high shell. And when he flexes out, if a linebacker goes out there with him, if a linebacker goes out there with him, it's a wrap. I don't even know if he catch a ball on this, but just showing his versatility. And it, yeah, because he slipped. So just showing his versatility on this one. Just think about it if you come out with two tight ends and two backs. Say say Andrews and and um likely's in the game. You come and you you know you send in your heavy or so personnel package or whatever to match up with two tight ends and two backs. And then you turn around and flex both of them out. Let Andrews and, and likely be in the slot. Then you have your two outside receivers out there. And now they don't have the personnel to match up with. Scary times. Scary times. And again, no real significance to this play other than where he lined up at. All right, now you got him back in his H-back role again. Now they're going empty with an H-back. So you got a receiver here, 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 and here. And with your H-back right here. It's a great play design right here. This is a great play design. Early, you know, at watching this whole game, they had been inserting him on this linebacker, either with a running back back here or with the quarterback. Now they, they progressed up to the next level of the play call. 
I'm gonna insert. I'm gonna insert right here on you. And he gonna crash. He gonna crash. It's gonna look like draw. Nope, not draw. And if he if he don't trip right there, it's a touchdown. But still, great play call, great great sale by Likely, and it's so because he had been inserting on that guy early in the game. He had been inserting on that guy early in the game. Now right here, what I did notice about his inline blocking, he's kind of reactionary. So and what I mean by that is, the defender kind of gets the first move on him. But he's so athletic and quick that he can recover before it turns into a problem. 21 got, got leverage on. Watch him snatch him. Now, right now you think likely's beat. But he's so quick, he's going to just cut him off. Look at that. Now, it ain't perfect. It ain't perfect. And he's not going to be able to be reactionary in the NFL because those guys, once they beat you, you're going to be beat. You're going to stay beat. But I do like the fact that he just don't give up on the play. Again, right here, he's going to um, initially block out on this guy, but he's going to work up to the to the linebacker. So it's going to really be like a uh, second-level block. Initially, on the end, but he knows the end is, is not who's the guy that he should be blocking. Because he's technically the read guy. Look at that double right there with 60. They're going to flatline this kid. Look at that. He on the ground rolling. Good double team with 63. They flatline that guy. He ended up getting a touchdown out of it. Yo, not close to a touchdown. But the willingness is what I like. The willingness. Now, again, flexed out right here. Find a soft spot in the zone. Can run routes. You, you initially thinking it's, um, what's it, 11 personnel, but... Technically, it's 10. Now, you got this guy, you know, even though it's play action, but this guy's pretty much the primary defender on Likely. And he looks like a linebacker. Simple. Just simple football. He can, he can create so many matchup problems with his uh, skill set. Again, right here. Initially, going to be reactionary. This is versus 21 again. It's going to be reactionary. The guy beat him inside. And you, it's really out of the screen right now, but you can see it because it's the opacity. He's beat right now to the inside. No, I'm sorry. Wrong wrong guy. Wrong guy. I know why I left out there. He blocking this guy. This is what I want. I put it out here because he's better in space at blocking. So you get him on some some corners and some uh, some safeties. This is what he'll do to him. So he's not in your screen yet. He's over here. That's the tackle. My bad. I messed up. But I'm not going to edit it out because players mess up too. Now now he's right here. This is him right here. Just seal him off. Good job moving his feet. The footwork is the key right here. Just move your feet. Just dance with him. Just move your feet dance with him. That's all it is. It's one, two, and moving your feet. You don't have to overpower people blocking on the edges. You don't. Just got to move your feet and stay between your, uh, I think I had a coach that he used to teach the young receivers, um, ball me man. No, not ball me man. Yeah, yeah. Ball me man. As long as you stay between the man and the ball, you good. And that comes from moving your feet. Look Again, look where he lined up at. In a slot. So imagine him being there, Andrews being here, Bateman being here, and whoever's up here. And they, if they come out in a light box like a nickel or a dime or something like that, you shift, Andrews there, likely there, and now you've got two tights. Or you go Andrews there and you move him over to H-back, or you just move Andrews down to tight end. All the possibilities you got by playing likely out there. It, it's It's... So many possible things you can do with him. And I don't think he even do anything on this play. It's just the fact that he lined up in the slot and the versatility option you get from Isaiah Likely. Yeah, that play was strictly based off where he lined up at. So we saw him line up. We saw him line up in the slot. We saw him line up 
at H back. We saw him line up at inline tight end. We also saw him, saw him lined up out here as the re solo receiver by himself. So all those different things you're going to get out of Isaiah Likely is a bonus. It's just up to Roman to, if they're going to play him, to use him right. But I really love him in that H-back role, and we run those uh, split zones and get him in the flats. Because he can turn those those three-yard passes, two-yard passes, into 20, 30, 40, 50-yard uh, gains. And then, you know, with all the coverage that Bateman and Likely, I mean, not Bateman, not likely, I mean, like, all the coverage that Bateman and Andrew's going to get, he has the potential to have a decent rookie year and be an actual threat, you know, early in the game, especially when, the, when they, you know, he's not really on the radar, especially early in the season, too, when he's not on the radar of other teams. He can get off early and then just open a plethora of things up for the entire offense. I'm not saying he's going to be the number one guy. Andrew's that guy. He may not even be the number two guy. But situationally, he can come in and be, have a good rookie campaign, especially if Greg Roman used him right. And uh, that's kind of all I got on Isaiah Likely. I uh, appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Before you get out of here, like, comment, uh, subscribe, you know, if you like so, if you do so. And then if you're still here at this late in the game, hashtag number four in the comment section. I want to see who all stayed through the entire video and all of this good quality um, football content. See y'all guys later, man. Peace.